In simple linear regression, we are taking individual subjects and measuring at least two traits from them. And we're using one of them as a predictor or explanatory. in order to predict the response. All right, so what's good to know is that every one of these points represents an individual subject. Where, where we have both measured the predicting variable and the response variable. So we could suppose that this is something like, maybe we could do like the weight of the car. We could do like car weight. And something like, I don't know, speed. Top speed of the car. Um, maybe, you know, the same car and we weigh it differently and we see, okay, like how, uh, how fast can, can the car go based upon how much weight it has. Anyhow. So this one would be a negative relationship that as the weight increases, the speed then decreases. Okay, so when we're doing this analysis, we are trying to basically find what is the model for this, uh, for this line. And if we were to go out and measure you know, every single uh, you know, car of, of this type and weigh it and then get the speed of it, we would know what the true population model is for this. And in regression analysis, that looks like this. This is y equals beta naught plus beta 1 x. Okay, so beta 1 is known, or beta naught, we'll start there, is known as the true intercept. And beta 1 is known as the true slope. Now, when we are doing our hypothesis testing, we are really interested in the slope. Uh, oftentimes the intercept, like the only reason sometimes why we have the intercept is to just correctly locate this line. Uh, I'll talk about later about how the intercept sometimes is, when you interpret it, is complete nonsense. But when we are doing this, the null hypothesis for regression analysis is that beta 1 equals 0, or that there is no relationship between these two variables. And what the alternative hypothesis is, is that there is a slope or that there is a relationship between the two. And we can do here, as we have done in our other hypothesis testing, we can do one-tail tests and we can do two-tail tests. Uh, in regression analysis, probably the more common one is to do the two-tail analysis, uh, but we can totally do a one-tailed as well. So these are the pocket, this is the population parameter that we are interested uh, in finding some sort of estimation for, about actually getting a confidence interval for this, uh, this population estimate. And the sample, uh, the, the sample statistic that we get that will approximate beta 1 is b. And so when we take the sample, this equation, what we can actually produce is we can get this y equals b0 plus b1 times x. So we can actually produce this when we perform our simple linear regression. Now we also, we want to be able to know like how can we correctly interpret this slope. Now you can think about, you know, our slope as like, well, isn't that just rise over run? And like, yes, that is a true and the correct interpretation of the slope, but there's a, there's a one that we like to use when we are talking about it in statistics. So what we like to do to interpret the slope which is, remember, what we get is beta 1. And this guy 
we say that for every one unit increase in X, there is a beta one or B one increase slash decrease depending upon if beta one is positive or negative in y. So if we look at our equation, if our x increases by one, means that we increase our y by this b one. And that's really how we interpret our, our slope here. And this is going to be important when we actually get to like our conclusion because we want to be able to make some statement about our slope. So kind of in conclusion, when we perform our simple linear regression and we're able to produce the model here, what we are testing is to see is there a true slope? And we're able to do that by finding some sort of confidence interval with using our B1. And we can interpret this slope by saying for every one unit increase in X, there's a B1 increase or decrease in Y. So over here in our in our specific example, we would say that there is a, um, for every one unit increase in the weight, maybe that's pounds or whatever, there would be a, whatever B1 is, so maybe that would be like a you know, 0.25 decrease uh, in the speed or miles per hour. And when we continue moving on down this, uh, we can talk a little bit about the specifics of how we actually perform that confidence interval.